This is the second video in a series about upgrading this Altair 680 computer to run version 3 of the Flex operating system. Today's video we're going to just jump right in where we left off at the last video. So if you haven't watched that previous video, I really recommend watching it first. To help you find it, I've put a link to it in the information below this video. Alright, in the last video we left off having just created a memory image of the system to load into the 680 to run Flex. And we developed that on this Southwest Technical 6800 computer. This computer is running Flex and allowed us to easily develop that. Let's go and take a quick look at what we had. The file we made was this Flex 3-680.sys. This is the memory image of Flex ready to run on the Altair 680. These other system files are actually just part of the development system we're running on. Now at this point, the only way we can get files or data into the Altair 680 is through the PROM monitor using S records. Basically the 680 supported a teletype as the console and in that environment you typically load from paper tape right through the console serial port. So to support that, we wrote a utility called send S19 that can take a binary file in um, Flex, for example, our Flex 680.sys and send it as S records through a serial port. And I can specify the serial port here. That's a new feature I added since we last run this. So this will send that system file out as S records through the serial port. And then over here on our 680, what we'll do is we'll type the load command. And so now the monitor is waiting for those S records to come in through this console port. But what we'll do is switch the console to come from our Southwest Technical 6800. All right, I just hit return on that. So those are coming in. You're not going to see it on the screen because that console is disconnected. But over here, you can see the data coming. I have it echoed to the screen so you can get an idea of progress as it comes out through the serial port. All right, that should be done here pretty soon. And when that's done, okay, it just finished. Let me flip this back to our terminal. We should have control back, which we do, and we can jump to the entry point, cold start entry point of Flex, and sure enough, we get our prompt. So that's a good sign. Now note that procedure is essentially analogous to booting from disk. That same file would be loaded from the disk by the boot ROM and then jumped to, and that's how the memory image gets started. We just had to bring it in a different way. So we're eventually, of course, going to want to boot from disk. This disk error 9 is normal. Basically, the disk is not working yet, and I had the disk ejected. I just inserted it for the rest of the work we're going to do. All right, so we have Flex up and running. That seems like we've gotten pretty far on this, but unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing we can do with Flex at this point because all the commands and utilities you would use to run Flex are all on the disk, and we have nothing on this disk. In fact, before we can use the disk, we have to run a utility that comes with Flex called New Disk, which formats the disk and puts on structures that the Flex file system requires in order to use the disk. Now, that program has to do some fairly low-level disk I.O. So as you might expect, it's another program that we had to customize specifically for the 680 in this controller. Um, so along with the driver for the terminal and the disk driver, New disk is another routine that has had to be written when you're porting this code. Now all of these have examples, for example, for the Southwest hardware that you can follow as you do your own. So you're really not starting from scratch. All right, so to get that program in here, I'm going to use the same technique. I'll do a load, switch to B. I'm going to go over to the 6800 and send new disk. All right, that's on its way. Now that's quite a bit smaller than the... Uh, um, the entire operating system, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, that's done. So I should be back. Okay, so this program loads up at A100. Um, in fact, pretty much all of your Flex commands run at A100. That's a part of a hole up inside Flex, about 1.5K, where a lot of the commands can run. That way, you can execute a command without it affecting the uh, memory space, the user space, where your program might be, and that can come in kind of handy. All right, so the only way I could really run this is to jump into the uh, program by doing a jump to A100. 
The problem is that new disk expects to have been initiated from the command line in Flex. And what that does is it sets up uh, calls, allows calls for the uh, program to ask for command line parameters and parse it. So new disk has a command line parameter, which disk it is that you want to format. So how can we go and make this run from memory as if it had been started off of disk with a command line? Well, fortunately, Flex has a feature called Memory Resident User Commands that allows just this. You can create a table of command names and point those to an address in memory where it should jump for that command, and it assumes that code is already in memory. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this technique. If we modify AC12, this, these two bytes are the address of the command table in Flex. Right now it's zero because there is no user command table. So let's go ahead and modify that. I'm gonna point it to 7,000 hex, because we'll create a table there, a command table. So now let's go to 7,000 and make a table. First thing it's looking for is the name of a command in ASCII. Um, let's just call it ABC. So see, that's 401, 42, 43. And then it's a null terminated string, so we put in a zero. Then after the string, it wants the address to jump to for execution, that is A1, Zero, 0 and now it's ready for the next command that would be in the chain. If there are no more, then you put in 0 to terminate the command table. All right, so now we have a command table because we modified AC12 and pointed at 7000. Our command name is ABC and it jumps to A100. I just called it ABC because I'm going to no load another command after new disk and uh, I could just type ABC and run that one as well. All right, so let's go back into uh, Flex, that's AD03, and now I can run that command, ABC, is actually going to run new disk, because that will just jump to A100, and I want to new disk drive zero. Are you sure? Yes. Scratch drive in zero? Yes. Uh, I don't need a volume name or number. All right, and it's off and running. Every dot you see there is a track. Let's take a step back and you can watch that run. You can see the lights going. A little bit as it works through this. So what new disk does is it ends up writing zeros to every byte of every sector on every track. Now in most controllers it would have actually done a low level format as well but this controller can't do that but it still is writing zero to all the tracks. Now what it puts in the first two bytes of each sector is a link to the next sector. So we have a giant link list of all the sectors on the disk. This essentially becomes the free list that uh, Flex will finally use in the end. All right, so it looks like it's done with the writing stage, and now if you take a look, you can see it's going through and it's verifying um, all the sectors. That's another part of New Disk is to verify that everything was written good. Right, another important thing that New Disk does is down on track zero, it puts the cold bootloader for Flex um, down on sectors one and two. And that's what gets loaded by the boot proms in your system. And it goes out to the file system and it's going to load, for example, that flex 3 680sys and then jump to it. So that's how we end up getting flex booted. Now, obviously, that routine, the, the cold bootloader, is running before you have got um, flex or any disk drivers in the system. So that cold boot routine has to be written specifically for the computer you're porting flex to as well. Um, so that's another routine that we had to write. And again, there's examples of how to write that. But new disk is what actually puts it out there. Um, also on sector three, that is updated on track zero. That contains information about how many sectors are on the disk, how many tracks, how many sectors per track, how many tracks altogether. Also points to the start of the free list. And then also on track zero, starting in sector five, is the directory. Uh, the directory can expand beyond track zero, but it starts off in track zero. All right, and so now you can see that that's completed. It's got 988 free sectors. Those are 256 byte sectors. So we got about 247K of free space on this disk. All right, so at this point, the disk is ready to be used. And now we need to start copying all the files from our Southwest Technical Development System over to this. To copy all of the flex files that we need from the development system over to this Altair 680, I'm going to use an X-Modem file transfer utility that I wrote several years ago. This allows me to transfer files between any two computers over a serial port using the X-Modem protocol. 
uh, to get that in here to begin with, we're gonna use the same technique we have been. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. So we'll go back to the monitor, do a load, switch to port B, and I'm gonna send it from the development system. All right, there it goes. Not too big. All right, that's done already. So you go back. Should be back here. We are. Jump back into Flex. Now again, that command table is still set up in here. It's still pointing to A100, and this program executes at A100. So I can now run this um, X modem receive or X modem get utility by typing ABC. And the first thing I'm going to do is get the X modem utility itself and write it to disk so I don't have to worry about this memory um, user memory table anymore. So this is essentially X modem get and then I'm going to let's just call it X modem get and now I have to tell it what serial port I want to get it through. This utility does not have to go through the console so I'm going to go disconnect this from the AB box program plug it into another serial port I have on this computer and this will save me from having to go back and forth through that uh, AV switch every time. This serial port right here is on the expansion board we're using. The serial interface is on the same board as the parallel interface. And that will save me from having to use the AV switch anymore. Okay. And let's see, so that, this has the option of going through port zero, which is the console, or port one, which is the serial port up on that board. I'm gonna go over here and send it. And then hit return here. All right, there it goes. I heard it click and starting to write. All right, so now I have that file on this computer. Now what I'd like to do is let's get a directory command. Let me scoot over here a little bit. Let me get a directory command. That's the catalog command. So let's do xmodem get cat.command through port 1. All right, I sent it over there. Normally I like to not hit return until I've started it over there. It syncs up quicker. It takes about three or four seconds to sync sometimes this way, but you just heard the disk go. All right, so now I should be able to see what's on this disk. There we go. We've got um, our first X modem command uh, retrieved, and now the catalog command is retrieved, and we can see what we're building. Next thing I'd like to do is make sure I can boot from this disk from now on. So let's go ahead and get the actual system file. So let's look at X modem get. I'm just going to call it flex3.sys, it's easier to type, and we'll get that now from port 1. I have a hard time typing that one with the dashes and the numbers. Alright, there it starts. Now this one's fairly large, so it's going to take a while. Once we get this on our system, then technically we can boot it. However, the boot ROMs in this Altair 680 know nothing about the Flex file system. Um, likewise, it's going to turn around and load the cold boot loader on sectors 1 and 2 we talked about. That cold boot loader, even though we wrote it with new disk, doesn't know where this Flex3.sys file is. Um, and so there's a utility that's part of uh, Flex called Link. And anytime you want to point the bootloader to a particular um, flex image, we can actually have more than one of these on a disk, you run link. Now, our, uh, our boot ROM is actually existed already. It's something we used with flex one, and it expected the bootloader to be on physical sectors one and two. Those are 128 byte sectors. Those are actually part, the second half of sector 13 and the first part of sector two, um, or sector one, on this uh, 680 configuration with the logical sectors that are 206 bytes. In other words, the default link command won't work. I had to make one that was compatible with this unique setup on here. So I'm going to need to get that custom link program over here. All right. 
So now once this link command is in place, then I'll be able to point the bootloader to this flex three. All right, so that's all there. So now I link flex three dot sys. And what this does is it gets the track and sector number for flex three dot sys out of the directory and then patches it in to the boot, the cold bootloader that's down on sectors one and two. At this point, I should be able to boot off of uh, disk. So let's go back to the monitor and we'll jump to FC100. This is where the bootloader is in ROM on this machine. It's the same bootloader that was used with Flex 1. So hopefully this will load Flex 3 into memory. There we go. So now we can boot from disk. Alright, so we're off and running. So now it's just the methodical uh, procedure of bringing over all the files I'll need. And I'm not going to make you go through that. We're just going to do a bunch more PC gets. Um, X modem gets, I mean, and retrieve these from the other system. And when that's all done, I'll come back. We'll do a quick demo of the system as it's fully built. I've built up a Flex 3 disk for this 680. Let's go ahead and power up this machine and see what it was like to boot it and use it real quick. Turn on the disk drives, power up the computer and do a reset. We had to run with two disks here. I'm going to boot the disk using the ROM monitor. Jump to FC100. You'll hear it hit the disk. Alright, and we're up and running Flex 3 just as quick as that. We do catalog. And like we saw in Flex 1, it lists them all. Quite a few more uh, files on this one, because like I said, the software is much more readily available. For example, here's a wide format version of the catalog command. Or you can get one that lists more information, for example, cat full for full information. So the beginning, the ending sectors, how many sectors, the date, that good stuff. How much is free. There's now a free command. A lot of these were not necessarily a part of the distribution, but software that was readily available on a utility pack or something like that. Uh, so again, free tells us what's free. Um, we, there's also, let's do a cat wide again. There's a nice thing called check free, which will go through and validate all the free space. It takes a while to run. You can dump memory without going to the monitor. In fact, the monitor, as you know, only dumps, um, you know, one byte at a time. Let's see here, we could dump starting at A100 and you get a, a page at a time and you can keep going on if you want. Um, what else is there? In addition to the assembler and the editor and copy commands and delete and all the stuff you're used to, uh, this one I have a, a small PLM compiler on here and I've got a small C compiler on here. Um, nice little utility here for editing your disk. Dispatch. This actually uses screen control characters to give you a nice workable utility. We'll pick drive zero, track zero, let's read sector five, and hit read. And see here we're actually looking at the first directory track. And we can edit in hex or in ASCII and actually cause all sorts of problems if I go up here and start editing that. I'm not going to. But it's a good way to patch a disk that had uh, a problem. And again, these, is, these are mostly written by users. This is actually written by an active user today. And, um, this is the kind of environment where you had access to all sorts of software because its usage of Flex became so widespread that there was a great variety of people writing software for the fun of it and actually to sell it as well. All right, so that pretty much does it for this demo. We've got Flex 3 up and running now, which is a more powerful version. That was an interesting exercise to port it. We learned a lot as we did it. And uh, this Altair 680 has, has got a whole new life because of uh, being able to add a disk drive to it. I still like the Southwest technical computer better, but it's always fun to look at lights and switches and, and see the history of these old computers.